up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another daily vlog and in this episode we're going to be working on the heat treat process for the 5160 knuckle dustin post-apocalyptic ish cleaver. The reason why I say ish is I had a conversation with a viewer on the last video for this and uh, he said that this does not fit the criteria for a post-apocalyptic knife for two reasons. One, it's not stabby enough. I wouldn't want to get stabbed by that. Two, you couldn't take someone's head off with one swing. I honestly don't know if people just are under the assumption that in a post-apocalyptic style setting that everyone's going to be running around with a katana or a two-foot buoy or something massive like that. No. There's not just a whole bunch of swords sitting around. People, there's not just like an abundance of swords out there. Most people are going to be running around with a knife like this. A camp knife style. I want you to see the actual size difference here. This, 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 this. I feel like the camera makes it look like it's smaller than it is. But I wouldn't want to take this to the neck at all, or to the side, or anything like that. It's a quarter inch thick at the spine. It's got, it's going to be sharp as hell. And uh, between that and me not wanting to get punched in the head by that right there, yeah, I would rather have this than a little camp knife. Which is what most people are going to have because they're going to get their knives from things like, eh, Academy, maybe Walmart, places where knives would be able to be, you know, scavenged, stuff like that. I would rather have something like this. I could be wrong, but I'm probably not. Because with this, I mean, it's big enough that if you needed to chop on trees, split wood, do all of the stuff that you could imagine doing, this would be the thing. So, I want to know in the comment section down below, what do y'all think? Is that something that you would select in a, you know, World War Z, a zombie video game, or a The Walking Dead video game? If this was one of the options, would you pick that? Would you think that was crazy enough? I want to know. Let me know. Comment section down below. But, without further ado, we need to get out into the shop and uh, go ahead and heat treat this. We're going to start off by normalizing it, then we're going to heat it up, we're going to dunk it in some oil and quench it, File test it, throw in the oven, temper it, call it done. So let's go ahead, jump into the forge, turn it on, light it up, and get the heat treating. that works. Now we can go ahead, toss it in the oven, 
and temper it. We're going to do 375 degrees for two hours. So let's go ahead and get that part done. Okay, so this is just a little test. You know, this is after temper. I went ahead and did that. I just want to give you all a little, a little test so you can see what the edge looks like right now. Now I know that it's not sharpened yet, but I want to show you all something. perfectly smooth now let's go with the side of it Try another rod here. so all it did was take the little bit of forge scale off there there's you can't feel anything dragging your fingernail down the edge nothing all right so that test right there is one of the reasons why i love 5160 so much the best part about this steel is for one you it, it's readily available you can get it from pretty much anywhere you know, you'll have friends that will give leaf springs to you. You don't even have to go out and purchase them. You know, you'll have people that just have them sitting around in their backyard and stuff like that. You can get that. This was a set of leaf springs that was just sitting at one of my friend's house for who knows how long. Luckily for me, I know what vehicle they came off of, so I was able to do my, you know, my research and know that it's 5160 steel. But it is awesome having something like this and being... 5160, it is one of the easiest steels to heat treat and get good results to where you can actually go through and beat up steel rod and do whatever you got to do. If it'll do this to that rod, it will definitely cut through tree branches, all that stuff that you're going to use something like this for or, you know, other, other things that you're going to absolutely wreck with something like this. But <clears throat> the cool part about this is the only thing that you really need to focus on when it comes to a 5160 knife, especially if it's got reclaimed 5160 still in it, so something where you took it off a leaf spring, you want to do the normalizing cycles. That is an absolute must. You don't know what the steel went through before it came into your possession, so you need to normalize this steel. It is absolute must. You will risk cracking so many different things because these leaf springs go through so many different stresses throughout their life of being a leaf spring. So we focus on normalizing, we get that part done, and then we quench it the proper way. Now, the cool part about 5160 is the heat range going into the quench it, the heat range of the steel can vary by almost 75 degrees, and you'll still get a decent heat treat. Me personally, I like mine between 1500 and 1550 degrees going into 120 degree canola or peanut oil. I use peanut oil because it doesn't stink up my shop, but I always suggest using those because you'll have some people who will get one of these, heat it up in a coal forge or something like that that they you know, make shifted together, and then quench it in motor oil, and that is not the proper way to do it. You won't get a good hardened blade by going through that process. The oil needs to be the right temp, it needs to be something that you can heat up like that. It needs to be something that's not going to make you sick whenever you go in and you quench it like some motor oils can do. So just make sure that you're thinking through those processes and getting yourself a nice heat treat. I temper mine 2 hours, 375 degrees. You can go all the way up to 420 degrees if you wanted to, but I would go really no less than 375 degrees. And you're going to get a good temper, good heat treat, Nice, nice, nice edge retention. I've done a lot of these. I've done everything from wakazashis to, you know, camp knives to things like this. And 
I've chopped an entire tree down with one of my wakazashis. If you're part of the TRE workshop page, you, you've seen me do stuff like that. It is something that is absolutely awesome. And that wakazashi has a zero edge. It is a just f the finest edge I've ever put on a knife and still able to cut through a tree, all the tree branches, and then shave with it. So the heat tree works out perfectly. Just Make sure you're doing your normalizing cycles, that's the biggest thing. And then try and quenching in the proper quenchant, even though it's not a 5160 quenchant, peanut or canola oil works just fine. Make sure you're doing that, make sure you're focusing on getting up to 120 degrees before you go into it with the knife. There you go. Guys, so, I know that this video has had a lot of talking. Had a decent length intro, decent length outro. When it comes to doing the hardening part of these, they're not super exciting. There's not a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. One of the things that I want to talk to you all about, though, is when it comes to the daily vlogs, there is intro, outro, there is me talking, stuff like that. What I tried my hardest to do during all of these daily vlogs was have it be about the content. Have it be about what we're doing. If I'm talking to y'all, it's because I'm telling y'all about something that we're going to be working on or that we worked on through that day. I tried my hardest not to do the thing that all of the people who are doing this whole vlogmas thing are doing where they're taking their people to the post office. They're going shopping. They're going and driving their car for half the dang video. I don't want to do that. I wanted my videos to be based on something and to have good content in them that is the content y'all came for. Y'all did not come here to watch me go to the post office or go to Lowe's or go to Home Depot or, you know, walk around my backyard or any of that stuff. Y'all came here to see me make things. So I've tried to have every single video dedicated to that. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed that. If you have, give this video a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there and I will see y'all tomorrow where we start hand sanding. Yay! <laughs> we're going to get the finish put on here and that's what we're going to work on. Guys, see y'all.